We're now going to delve into differential geometry. This is really exciting stuff. What I enjoy the most about it is how the framework that we've built is pretty much handing out these results and handing out the definitions. And you can just step back and enjoy. So we're going to talk about curves. First, planar curves, then curves in space. And we're going to discover something about curves by doing the only thing that we can do, which is take the derivative. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative and see what happens. So we have a curve. We're going to do something that we've done before that's very natural. And that's why I love it, but also very particular. And that's why I don't love it so much. And that's parameterize the curve by its arc length s. And so our position vector is a function of s, which we can take a derivative of. And so you will recall that when we say arc length, we've removed pretty much all arbitrariness in our choice of parameterization. But there is still a little bit of arbitrariness left. For example, the point where s equals 0, the origin, so to speak, is entirely up to us. And whether we choose s to be positive in this direction or in the opposite direction is also up to us. So for the sake of my drawing pictures, let's say that s grows in this direction. And so here's our position vector r of s. And you will recall that the, der the derivative of r of s and we know that the derivative of r of alpha is, is a tangential vector, is a vector that points in the tangential direction. That's common for all parameters, even though we haven't proved it yet, but we will, especially now that we have the chain rule. Remind me to do it one day, someday. Okay, but this derivative is a very special tangent, and it's what? What kind of tangent is it? The unit tangent, do you guys remember that? That if you use an arbitrary parameter alpha, you get an arbitrary tangent. But if you use the arc length, if you use arc length as your parameter, the resulting tangent is, unit, is the unit tangent. I haven't put that video online yet, but I will soon, I promise, over the weekend. Okay, so to summarize, the r prime with respect to s, where s is arc length, is the unit tangent, which we denoted by capital letter T, T of S. So T of S, interestingly, is a unit vector. And so we'll continue to do the one thing we can do, which is take the derivative of T of S. Tell me something about the derivative of T of S. It will be perpendicular to T of S. It'll be perpendicular to the tangent, or as Mike put it, perpendicular to the curve which is a much better way of saying it, which is it's shorthand for saying perpendicular to the tangent of the curve. You just say perpendicular to the curve. Why? That's right. You keep your velocity, but we can even take it a step further or a step back. I don't know which direction it is, but T of S is a vector of constant length. And one of our first exercises was to show that the derivative of a vector of constant length is orthogonal to that vector. It is orthogonal to that vector. You guys remember that? Okay, so t prime of s is orthogonal to t. So it points in the normal direction. In fact, that's the definition of the normal. This, that's the analytic definition of the normal. It's the derivative of the unit tangent. It points in the normal direction. So I will draw it like this. Is it unit length? Let's think about it. I will ask you two questions. How long is it and which way does it point? First of all, let's talk about how long it is. Is it always unit length? Is it always a given length? Is it always a certain length? What do you think its length depends on? The length of this. Let's think about it intuitively. Then all of that will come out analytically. But let's begin by thinking about it intuitively. Let's see what happens for a straight curve, straight line. 
tell me what t prime of s is for a straight line. Think about it. What's t prime of s at this point? Well, clearly the tangent points along the curve itself and its unit length. Great. What's t of s at this point? The exact same vector. You guys are with me? t of s is actually a constant vector. It doesn't matter that, it, that it's anchored at different points. Remember that once we start doing arithmetic, subtraction with vectors, they all come from the same point. So t of s is the exact same point. So actually this expression can be zero. So be a little bit careful when you say orthogonal. Be a little bit careful. Because sometimes it can be zero. So I'm beginning to think that when you say orthogonal, it means the dot product with t is zero. That's what you're really saying, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so when the line is straight, it's a constant vector, and then, it's, and then t prime of s is the zero vector. Okay, that's good. We're collecting good evidence. So what makes t of s vary? What makes it change? What makes it be not constant? It's constant length, but what makes it not a constant vector? Curvature. The line curves. So what makes the unit tangent not constant for this line is the fact that from this point to this point, the direction changes because the curve curved. And if it curves not at all, then the tangent changes not at all. And if it curves a little, then the tangent will change a little. And if it curves a lot, if it did this, right, then think about how much of a change in the unit tangent we'll experience for a small difference in s. Right, so look, from this point to this point, s changed as much, or actually half the amount that it changed from this point to this point. And here, the two tangents were pointing more or less in the same direction. There is definitely variation, and it's whatever it is, but it's not as dramatic as it is here. So the greater the curvature, the faster t of s changes. You guys are with me? So the rate of change of this corresponds to our intuitive understanding of curvature. If the curve curves rapidly, this changes rapidly. If the curve curves slowly, this changes slowly. And so no, this vector, it will always point in the tangential direction, excuse me, in the orthogonal direction, in the normal direction, but its length is very much dependent on how quickly the curve curves. It can be, the length can be either zero or it can be very, very high. So here's what you do. You say that whatever the direction is, let's make that unit vector. The unit vector in that direction will be called n, and it's the principal normal. That's what this is. It's the principal normal, which is different from normal. We'll discuss normals in the context of surfaces, and then a curve will be a special case of a surface, and then the word normal will mean something else. This is the principal normal. And then its length will be denoted by kappa. So n is unit length. I can even write of s, because it depends on the, your position on the thing. And actually kappa of s as well. OK, so this is called the principal normal. And this is called, is it called the principal curvature? Curvature for sure. But I think you've got to call it the principal curvature, which is once again different from curvature when we talk about surfaces. So this is called the curvature, the principal curvature. And if it's not called that, I'm calling it that. The principal curvature. Now let's talk about something very, very interesting, which is signs, signs, the direction. We've discussed the length. Now let's talk about which way it points. And the most interesting question there is, what if I had chosen s to go in the opposite direction? Would the, tan would the tang tangent point in the opposite direction? And would the normal point in the opposite direction? 
Well, let's talk about it. Let me not throw out the answer. Let me talk about it. Let me point, let's talk about this curve with S growing in this direction. Let me make actually draw a different curve where curvature is a little bit greater. Let's talk about this curve. And, let, and here's our unit normal. And if S grows here, I'll put an arrow, isn't that nice? Shows the direction in which arc length grows. And so tangent is like this. And do you see when, as it's moving around the curve, it keeps changing, changing its direction. So from this point to the next, where does the little delta point? It points inward, and so the normal, when you take the limit, will point inward. Okay, that's good. Now let's reverse the direction. Reverse the direction. Here is now the, the unit tangent. And do you see that from this moment to the next, right, it's minus the tangent, right, but the difference goes from this to this. So the distance, once again, points inward. Do you see that? The distance points inward. And so in the limit, it will once again point inward. So it will be the same vector. So it doesn't change its direction. So half of you are surprised. Actually, a third of you are surprised, which is fine. Right? That would have been my original guess, because everything becomes minus. Well, except not. And there, I can give you an intuitive explanation and an analytic explanation for why this is so. Here's the intuitive explanation. This being essentially the second derivative corresponds to acceleration. And when you're going around a track, your acceleration points inward. Whether you go around the track counterclockwise or clockwise, your acceleration points inward. Now, analytically, why does it make sense? And analytically, it makes sense because this, the derivative of t, is the second derivative of r. It's the second derivative of r. So when we reverse the direction of arc length, it's like putting a minus sign here, right? I'm being sloppy. I'm not coordinating things and reusing the letter. I'll just write this part so that, you know, it's doing this. And when you do this, think about what happens by the chain rule. By the chain rule, when you take one derivative, one minus comes out. And that's why the tangent indeed reverses its direction. And when you take the second derivative, another minus comes out and the two minuses cancel each other. So when you re-parameterize your curve like this by flipping the sign on the independent variable, all of the odd derivatives change their sign, and all of the even derivatives keep their sign. Make sense? Okay, so that's not surprising. So the principal normal always points in the same direction regardless of which way your parameterization, parameterization, there you go, parameterization points, right? And it always points what you would call inward. So whichever way the curve curves, that's the way it points. And the corresponding intuition is acceleration, points inward. Okay, and so that's an important takeaway. That's a great property of the principal normal. If you think about the normal to the surface, that's not how it works. It's also not opposite. It works in a totally different way. And, but we can also say that kappa curvature, principal curvature, is always a positive quantity. Because it's the length of that vector. The length of the vector, it's the length of this vector. The length of the vector cannot be negative or, any, or anything else. Could be zero. Principal curvature could be zero. But that's, but not negative. So principal curvature is a non-negative quantity. Very important. Okay. Fantastic. Now, the thing that I mentioned in passing that I should mention explicitly is that when you have a curve like this, supposing we choose arc length to go in this positive direction, then here we have the tangent, and here we have the normal. And then at this point where the curvature points the other way, here we have the tangent, and here we have the principal normal. 
And so do you see how here tangent to normal is clockwise and here tangent to normal is counterclockwise. So it flips as it goes from being concave one way to being concave the other way, which happens right here at the point of inflection, so to speak. Not so to speak, <laughs> it is point of inflection. Okay, this pair flips. And in fact, at this point, the principal normal is not defined. Because remember how we defined the principal normal. We took the derivative of the tangent and whatever vector was, we took the unit vector in that direction and called it the principal normal. And then its length was principal curvature. When the result of this differentiation, which is what will happen at this point, is zero, then there is no such thing as the unit vector in that direction because it's zero. We still have its length, so principal curvature is fine. But the principal normal is a discontinuous function. And the discontinuities occur at the point of inflection.